made your decision, have you? Well, yes, Dad. Uh, I couldn't stick around here any longer under the present circumstances. Besides, I figure we owe the Canadians a helping hand. But we're not involved in this war at present. We will be. I've taken that into consideration. You always have more consideration for strangers than you have for me or your mother. I wish you wouldn't continue to call her my mother. But her marriage to me makes her your mother. Well, let's forget it, Dad. I dropped your name when I enlisted. Why, Mickey, what's wrong? The lightning! Gary, I'm scared! Uh -huh. Don't tell me I have a brother who's afraid of a little storm. I am! Here, I'm gonna tell you all about the lightning. Once there was a beautiful princess of the sky who was killed by a cruel god named Thormer. Yes, and then what? Well, there was a brave knight who loved the princess. So he went into the sky and asked Juno to help him. Go on. Juno made him knight of the flaming sword and gave him a thousand horsemen to help him drive the wicked god out of the sky. So you see, Mickey, there's nothing to be afraid of. Whenever you see the lightning, you just see the, and the flaming sword. The thunder is the hoofs of a thousand horsemen driving the cruel god from the sky. Golly, that's a good story. He's a brave guy. And so are you. <laughs> Thanks. And now we're going to take off to bed. The propeller's broken. If that would have been a real crank, the guy in it would have been killed. I'm afraid he would, Mickey. That does happen. They're brave, like that night you was telling me about. Yes, it does happen, and they are brave. Would you like to hear the aviator's favorite toast? Sure. Here's to the roaring motors and planes in the shell-torn sky. Here's to the men gone west today, and here's to the next man to die. That's a good poem. Will you learn it to me? Well, I will when I get back. You're going somewhere? Well, just for a little while. Mama's gone, now you're going. Oh, but you have a new mother. But she ain't my real mother. I know, Mickey, but she loves you. And I want you to promise me one thing. She'll always do just what she tells you to. I promise you, because we're pals. Oh, it's time to go to bed now. Oh, no, no. Stay here until I go to sleep. Oh, no, you must go to bed. No, no, stay here, please. <laughs> stay here.
I'm telling you, those new motors they're turning out have the DTs. They're terrible. Well, Mickey Brune, you'll soon be a full-fledged flyer. I hope so, Sergeant Phelan. Well, you will, if you listen to Captain Horton, because he's one of the best flyers we have in the service. Well, that is, except you, uh, Sergeant Phelan. <laughs> well, you know, you know, that's true. <laughs> I remember the time when planes was first invented. Yeah. Wilbur Wright came to me and said he to me. Uh, I now, suppose you invented them, huh? Well, no, not, uh, but I helped him. Attention! <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, men. Good morning, sir. The grades of your final meteorology examination will be posted after class. And this is your last day in ground school. It's my last day with you. Mr. Bruin. Mr. Michael Bruin. Yes, sir. Would you tell us what you think of the weather today? It looks pretty bad, sir. Bad? Is that all this course has taught you? Whether it's either good or bad? We should be able to determine accurately what to expect from the elements. But unfortunately, no matter how careful a student is, he might sometimes be caught. For example, electrical storms often occur without warning, in which case you'll have to rely on your judgment and experience. Now, I might add, that the 150 young men of your class who have been eliminated from training are unfortunately found uh, to lack the essentials required like an army flyer. But that's no discredit to them. Remember that. And remember this, that you still have two weeks of intensive training on the field before you take your final test. But I'm proud of you all. And I hope you'll win your wings and cherish them, and never forget that you're officers and gentlemen. Happy landings. That's all. Well, it won't be long now, Mickey. Horton is a great guy, Cecil, and we won't let him down. No. Remember, Michael Broom, you are now an officer and a gentleman.
Cecil Dunbar. You are now an officer and a gentleman. Happy landing. Oh, snap out of it, Mickey. You got a tough break, but listen to something. Out with it. Tell me how sorry you are. Regrets, condolences. What are you waiting for? So you're letting it get you, huh? What do you think? Ah, you're lucky to get out of it. Uh, you're just saying that to make me feel good. For years, I've made up my mind to wear those wings, and 10 days before I get them, I'm washed out. The instructor said I was flying mechanically, but I was flying, wasn't I? Oh, sure you were. You're a good flyer. The best I know. Hey, listen, you haven't forgotten your promise, have you? What promise? About going to the party at the club tonight. You know, the one that Raoul is giving for his sister Molly. I wouldn't take it too hard, young fellow. At least you're out of the service with a whole body, which is better luck than I had. Well, it's sporting of you to say that, McGuire, but I can't see it that way. I've lost my privilege of serving in the Air Corps. Sure, that's a tough break, too. Sort of breaks your heart. But let me tell you, Brune, that between a broken hip and a broken heart, you choose the latter. It doesn't last so long. You must have had many experiences during the war. I wish you'd tell me about them. One subject I don't care to discuss. Oh, uh, Mr. Brewer. Pardon me, sir. He had a terrible crack up during the war. Any reference to it upsets him. I understand. Well, important news from the ranch. I've got to get there right away. You stay here in San Antonio until I send for you. Will you forgive me, Joe, if I run along? Important business. Oh, of course, if you must go. I'll leave my sister in your care. Don't worry, I'll take good care of her. Good night, folks. Good, good night. night. Good night, Rose. Were you sorry you came, Mickey? Well, of course not. <laughs> if you'll pardon us, I have something to say to Mr. Brooks. Sure. What is it, Miss McGuire? Trouble? May I help? No, I'm afraid not. Michael. May I call you Michael? I wish you would. Or Mickey. Well, Mickey, then. Will you tell me about your brother who was killed in the war? Trouble is, we never heard anything definite. Dad never believed he was dead. All he ever told me was that he disappeared. I was only a kid then, but I worshipped him. You know, kid stuff. I know. I'll bet he was a great pal. That's why I was in the Air Corps. He was a great flyer. I can see him fighting a dozen ships single-handed. And if he's dead, I know that his spirit is maybe riding the skies alone. That's why I wanted to carry on. <sighs> you think that's a strange fancy? I think it's beautiful. And somehow, I know you'll make good. Mickey. I need someone to play Brave Knight for me. I'm worried about Raoul. He's become mixed up in something illegal. Criminal, I'm afraid. Well, what do you mean, Molly? I don't know, really. But something strange is going on at our ranch. Raoul has brought a number of hard-looking men to the place. One of them, Moran. I'm sure he's a criminal. Well, hasn't your brother told you about it? No. Obviously, he's trying to keep me here so I won't find out anything. Now the telegram. I've just got to get back. Well, I'm a pretty poor excuse for a brave knight, but I'm sure you're a princess. Would you like me to drive you? Would you? It's 300 miles, you know. When do we start? Right away. Your brother has a Spanish name, and you have well, a... Well, we're part Spanish. 
Then your name should be Dolores. Well, my mother was Spanish and my father was Irish. You know how the Irish fight. I look like my mother. And fight like your father? If I think I'm right, I do. Will you fight if I call you Dolores? Then you don't care for Molly? Oh, yes. I care very much for a certain princess. I'll get off at home. We live on this road about 10 miles out of town. I'll call you at Cecil's as soon as possible. You will trust me, won't you? Always. Well, we'll soon be there. Morning, Miss McGuire. Has my brother passed yet? About two hours ago. Thanks. Hello. This telephone, it, it was all right a moment ago, and now it's gone dead. I don't know what's the matter, senorita. If you're trying to get a connection, you won't have any luck. I just had the wire. What are you doing here? Well, I'm not a child. This is my house as much as yours. Why did you come back? Because I realized that something's going to happen. And just what is going to happen? That's what I intend to find out. You're being childish. Don't think I've been blind to, to your bringing this gang here. And all the secrets. I tell you, Molly, you're letting your imagination run away with you. There's nothing to fear. Then why did you cut the telephone wire? To prevent you from doing something foolish. Now, who were you calling? If you refuse to be confident of me, I must return the compliment. Very well. Supposing I tell you that the thing that you fear may come true and place me in grave danger. Then you have been lying. Why don't you admit it? I'm admitting nothing. Listen, Molly. It will soon be all finished. Then everything will be all right. Now, why did you phone? To warn someone. Warn someone? Who? Michael Broom. Oh, oh yes, the cadet. I had forgotten about him. Is he coming? He was coming. Oh, I see. You canceled the engagement. I won't involve an innocent man. Splendid. But remember, no one must come here until afterwards. Till afterwards. I understand. A sensible girl. I'm to see Jim Lofton at once. That's Jim Lofton's plane, isn't it? Where's he been? Just making a test flight. Department of Commerce Air Regulations, my dear. They're examining the plane today. Indeed. Will you have them serve breakfast? Jim and I will be in shortly. Very well. Well, tonight it's do or die. I've just given her the final checkup. Careful, Jim. Look here, Raoul. Why don't you get out of this crooked game while you still have time? Well, why don't you? Well, things are different with me. I'm on my own. No one depending on me. No one cares a continental whether I'm straight or not. But you've got Molly to look out for. Oh, that's just it. This ranch has been owned by McGuire's for generations. 
It's all that Molly and I have left. I've got to save it for her. You mean you're really dead broke? Financially, physically, and morally, I guess. Look here, Jim. If that's to me, you look up for Molly. <laughs> you know I will. It's the least I can do to repay. Now, don't say that, Jim. What happened in France doesn't matter now. Well, it does with me. Otherwise... Well, otherwise, you'd quit, eh? No. I mean to get both you and Molly out of this mess, Ann. Well, by the way, you haven't yet told me who this mysterious Mr. Jones is. Curious, eh? Well, it's still plain Mr. Jones. Morning, Chief. Hello, Brune. Have you seen the morning papers yet? No, not yet. I just looked in the ranch when Baxter tipped me off you wanted to see me. Sit down. Well, all of the big oil companies are demanding a grand jury investigation. They want to know why the interstate shipment of hot oils isn't stopped. They claim that millions of barrels of oil are being tapped at the border every day. And it's up to us to arrest the racketeers. We will. And you have a lead. My hunch was... Yes, the racketeers are working for McGuire's ranch. Moran, huh? Is McGuire involved? I'm afraid so. Mm, that makes it tough for you. He was a buddy of yours, I understand. Yes, we met in France during the war. We both belonged to the Flying Corps. Morning during the dawn patrol, he cracked his ship, trying to save me from certain death. I'm afraid his injuries uh, left him mentally ill. Well, would you like for me to assign someone else to the case? Oh, no, I, I appreciate your thought, however, but I'd rather go through with it. There's still a chance I might be wrong. And if you're right, I'll arrest McGuire. One thing is certain, Chief. Moran and McGuire are working under orders of one man known only as Jones. Jones? What an uncommon name, eh? <laughs> McGuire know you're in the Federal Service? No. Oh, he doesn't even know my real name, Rune. I joined up with the Canadians under my mother's name of Lofton. For family reasons and so forth. All right, Jerry, that's your business. As a matter of fact, actually, McGuire's working as my aide. How? When he introduced me to this fellow Moran, as a flyer wanting to pick up some easy money and vouched for me, Moran got Jones's okay. I'm now a member of the gang to all intents and purposes. When do you expect to get the break? Any day now. Moran got McGuire to allow the army to hold their annual maneuvers on his ranch. What's the big idea? Well, my guess isn't wrong. Under the noise and confusion of the mimic warfare, they'll pull their last big job, use the Plains Ranch to make their getaway over the border. Moran thinks I still believe the planes are to be used as decoys to lure the border patrol on a wild goose chase. And I'm playing right into their hands. Well, what about McGuire's sister, Molly? She knows nothing about what's really going on. Anything else, Chief? No, I think that's all. I'll have Baxter keep in touch with you. Good luck, Jerry. Thank you, sir. to know who that guy really is. I'm getting away with this hot oil for months. We haven't been able to pin it on anybody yet. Operator, give me the Border Patrol headquarters. Hello, Mr. Speaking. Lofton had his plane up this morning. Be ready with yours. Something's going to break. Yeah, I'll keep in touch with you. You were right about that phone. That line's dead. All right. All right. You've made arrangements for the war maneuvers to take place on your ranch, huh? Yes, Moran. All right, now we'll go over this thing once more, so there won't be any slip-up. When the barrage starts, we'll dynamite the company's line right here. Then, 
We'll connect our line with the city's abandoned water main, open the valve, and load the ship's cargo there. Red Johnson is going to fly out with the dough, if you don't mind, Lawton. Then you, to occupy it, will start up with your plane with the dummy cargo aboard. The authorities will probably think that it's dope and start up right up after you. Is that clear? Right. Now let's not have any slip up in this. Cecil gave you my message? Yes, but the phone went dead before you finished. I figured something was wrong, and, well, here I am. Oh, I'm so glad, Nicky. My hunch was right about the telegram. There is something wrong. I, I'm only wondering if it's right to involve you. The Rowell has forbidden any visitors to come on the ranch until it's all over. What's all over? Oh, I don't know, Mickey. I wish I did. Thank goodness this will soon be over. And by dawn, we'll be able to split a few hundred thousand amongst us while they're piping the oil aboard the ship. I'll keep the attention of the government men on me. All you have to do is to keep far enough ahead of them to keep out of the range of their guns. Well, judging from the bunch I just saw around the hangar who look like a small addition of the rogues gallery, and the fact that they have a plane on the plate, my guess is that their game is smuggling. But what could they be smuggling? Ooh, might be liquor or maybe China drugs. Oh, you don't think that my brother... Oh, no, not that, Molly. I'm sure of it. Thanks, Mr. But those government men, we've got to do something before it's too late. We'll be stationed at the old fort adjacent to the McGuire Ranch. The Blue Army is in the adjoining woods. Maneuvers start sometime after sunset. See how this affects him. Wait him now. I've been trying to persuade him to go back to town. Oh, you have. Well, he's taken orders from Jones through me. And so are you. I don't see it that way. You don't? Well, see it this way, then. We need McGuire as our front. He'll do the soft soaping to these government agents as they come nosing around here again. We need you because you're the best flyer we could get that would take the pay and keep his mouth shut. Jim said that you could do that. See that you do it. Well, the roads will soon be jammed with soldiers and the ranch is gonna be overrun with them. I gave them access to the ranch to get water and supplies. You know why. That's the idea. The more noise and confusion, the better. It'll cover our movements. I'll be glad when it's all over. You went into it with your eyes open? Yes. But I talked you into it. No one talked me into it. I need this boost desperately, but innocently enough. And now it's too late. Mm -hmm. It is too late. And no funny business. Moran, he followed your instructions. But here I am. Just how much do you know? That what he told me isn't true. Listen, once and for all, I do not intend to have you interfere in my business. And now that you are here, you're not going to leave without my permission. And I'm going to see that you don't. Why, Mr. Bruce! Miss McGuire, I hope you'll pardon my unceremonious entrance, but, well, the spirit of battle being in the air, I couldn't resist the temptation to charge. You can cut out the kidding, Mr. Broom, but it happens to be mighty inconvenient for us to have guests just now. This is my home as much as yours. Michael is my guest. Thank you, Miss McGuire. You must be tired after your long trip. I'll have Maria get you some refreshments. Thank you. Uh, Maria? Bring some wine and some glasses. Si, sí, senorita. Is that crate of yours undercover? I'm not a fool, Moran. You go on outside and talk to them in case they set that ship down. I'll get the men out of sight. Oh, Captain Lofton. 
I'm sorry, but in the excitement, I forgot my manners. Uh, Nikki, this is Captain Lofton, Michael Broom. How do you do? Howdy. Will you join us, Captain? With pleasure. Mickey, give a toast. Oh, I'm not much good at it. Perhaps Captain Lofton. All right. Here's to the roaring motors and planes in the shell-torn skies. Here's to the men gone west today. And here's to the next man to die. Why you gave that toast? It was a favorite toast of my buddy. Hearing your name brought back memories. His name was Jerry Boone. We're in France together. What became of it? Shot down two days before the armistice. Poor fellow. You didn't know? Well, not positively. We just heard that he disappeared. And I've always hoped that... Well, I'm sorry. I, I thought you knew. Have a drink? Isn't it strange? I I seem to know you, and yet I can't explain why. I've got it. Your picture is in our day room. Yours and Lieutenant McGuire's. Oh, sort of a rogues gallery, eh? Well, the fellows call it our who's who. They're pictures of a lot of the men you must know. No doubt. I dare say things have changed a lot since my time. Oh, yes, sir. That is, according to the old timers. Things do change sometimes. I've sort of lost track of time. People you know are children today and grown up tomorrow. You're in the flying service, aren't you? I was. Got washed out in the final test. What? Because I was afraid of a storm. Afraid to trust a brave knight and his thousand horsemen. Oh, but you wouldn't understand about that. Perhaps I do. Oh, well, it doesn't matter so much now that he's dead. Gee, he was a great guy. That's why I wanted to carry on. Does Molly want you to quit? Molly? Guess what? I believe I will have another drink. Oh, of course. we have around here. Am I included in your list of thugs, Miss McGuire? I know, Captain Lawson, that you fought side by side with my brother in the war, and that you're standing by him now in, in this trouble. Why don't you get him to give it up? Well, if you don't mind, I'd rather not discuss that now. Perhaps later. Funny world, Molly. Lawson was my brother's buddy, too. Yes, it's true. He said he was shot down. Dead. Is the phone fixed? Si, senor. Our phone is all fixed. We ought to be getting a message any time now. Where's Lawson? He was at the hangar. He asked for an extra dome of ammunition. He'll need it. <laughs> What's the idea of coming in here? Miss McGuire has something to say that'll be worth hearing. All right, boys and girls, let's hear it. How would you like to have all this for yourself? All or what? All this smuggling business. You hear that, Fernando? We're smugglers now. Uh-huh. Come on over to the house. I want your brother to hear this. No, you mustn't. My object in offering you this plan is to secure his safety. And that goes for Lofton, too. What do you think I am, crazy? We're not asking you to do this for nothing. But the senorita is making a big joke for us. No, I'm not joking, Fernando. I want every particle of contraband and equipment taken off this ranch tonight. You can have it all. I want Captain Lofton and my brother held captive here until it's all over. And you must promise that neither of them will be injured. It's a silly idea and I don't like it. Wait, amigo. Maybe it is not so silly. I say it's still a silly idea, and I don't like it. 
If they muff it, we're going to be the ghosts. Dead ones. Perhaps the senorita does not wish anyone to know what she wants us to do. That's right, Fernando. No one but you and Moran. See? We'll think it over. I tell Mr. Moran that Senor Lofton was going to shoot up Mr. Jones and Mr. Moran does not like it. Then the job up to be done, I'm going to do it. Double crossing. You heard me. We're going to take what's coming to us now. This is our game, Moran. And you're not big enough to play it. Well, I'll try. Why did you do it? He's dying. And it wouldn't have happened if it hadn't been for my silly plan. Clayton's a wonder, Molly. All the boys at the field swear by him. Then why can't I go to him? Oh, this terrible noise. Why can't something be done to stop it? Well, something bad has happened, senor. In the border patrol? No, no. It is Senor Raul. They have him in the house. Who has him? Government man? He is hurt. Maybe he died. What happened? There was a fight. Who will? Maybe Fernando and Moran. Oh. Say nothing to anyone else. I'm going to the house. Hold everything when I get back. Muy bien. Do you hear that, Colonel? They found the rage. We'll be too late. Why don't they give us the signal to start? Yes! Jim! Yes, Lieutenant. Here I am. Where, where are you? Is Horton... Is Captain Horton with you? Yes, he's here. Have to stop that noise out there. Easy, easy. Stop it. <laughs> Nothing will stop it. Not until we're dead, I tell you. Dead. Oh, go on the town patrol. The patrol's called off. Oh, the patrol's called off. Then I can sleep. Yes, you sleep. Is there a chance? 
Perhaps. Sure, I didn't know that you were in these parts, Captain. I haven't seen you. All right, Sergeant. I'm going to ask questions, not answer them. I understand Moran did it. That's true, Captain. Seems like there was some kind of a scuffle, and he let him have it. Does Miss McGuire know? She sent for me. Where's Mickey Broom? He's with her. I thought it best. Watch him. Yes, Colonel. He said we couldn't fail, Mickey. But we have. We have. And it's all my fault. Steady, steady, my girl. May I go to him now? Not now. Perhaps in a few moments. He's resting quietly. Lofton has calmed him. Lofton? Is he still with him? No. He went out after some fellow named Moran. Moran? Oh, Mickey, we must stop him. There, there, my dear. I want you to tell me how this all happened. Something I want to explain to you. Where's Molly, Doctor? She's with her brother. Just a moment, Michael. I'd like to have a talk with you. Yes, sir. There's no use in evading matters now. An immediate operation is necessary if her brother's life is to be saved. You mean here at the field hospital? No. I wouldn't have the facilities here. The operation is a delicate one, and I'll have to have all the assistance and facilities. But San Antonio is more than 300 miles away. I'm sorry, but there's nothing else I can do. To attempt an operation of this nature here would only hasten what I know would happen. Is that the only... The only one. Well, could he be moved? I mean, could we get him aboard a plane? That would be dangerous, but uh, perhaps it could be done. Is there a plane here? But there's one here at the ranch. Oh, I'm so sorry, Ralph. It's all my fault. I think I could get you out, sir. Very well. I'll examine the patient and give you my final decision. Be brave. Then it is true. He is going to die. No. There is a chance if he can be flown to San Antonio for the operation. And I promised the Colonel to get a pilot. You? Why, Mickey, don't you worry. We've got the very man right here, Captain Lofton. He was a war ace. I'll go and tell the Colonel. Lofton. Oh, Mickey. Lofton. And he can't do it. Get down. All the ships, we are ready. Pronto! Turning the valve. Is everything ready? Good. This oil's hot. Phone Jones. Tell him I was right. 
Lofton is the federal dick. We want the doors range. Here she comes. Goodbye. if we can. You can. There's no pilot. And you know that Lofton's out. There'll be a pilot. If he doesn't go, the doctor says he'll die. That's his tough luck. It is also ours. The bargain we have made with the senorita, it is... Fernando, if McGuire talks in the hospital... By the time he is ready to talk, it will be too late. Son, I'm gonna hold Lofton here. And if McGuire does talk, well... I... You wouldn't dare. I wouldn't. Where is he going? I don't know, senor. Perhaps he's going to see Lofton. Maybe he wants to find out that the captain did not uh, get free. I must see Lofton. I don't trust Moran. Back. Wheel the plane out into the wind. I'm certainly glad it's you. Thanks, Captain. But there isn't a moment to lose. I can't go through with it. Go through with what? Everything. Our plot. What plot? Molly and I figured that if we could hold you and her brother prisoners until after the smuggling was over, we'd save you both from jail. But Raul was shot. So, you went to Moran and Fernando? Yes, we had to risk it. But they agreed that nobody would be hurt. Did Moran really shoot Raul? Sure. Now he's threatening you. And there's something else. Is Raul dead? No. Doc Clayton says he has a chance if he can be flown to San Antonio for the operation. All they need is a pilot. Oh, I told you I was washed up and afraid of storms. So if you'll give me your word that you'll make the trip, you buddy, I'll stay here and take the bus. You're far from being washed up, Mickey. I'm proud of you. But before I agree, there's something you must know. I lied when I told you your brother was shot down. You wondered why I gave that toast. The real reason was, I taught it to you. You're? Jerry Broom. So that's why you told me you were dead. You're a crook. Well, it doesn't matter now. The thing is, and Molly. But Mickey, you don't understand. So you're double-crossing me now, huh? You're as bad as the captain, or you're worse. You framed him, and now your nerves failing you. Get the plane, Mickey. Take Raul and Molly to the field. All right, Terry. Come behind him, Chip. Sorry, sir. Lawson has left the ranch. I'm Michael Brune. You signed my report, which washed me out. It said fear of storms. I've flown this route on practice flights, and I can do it, sir. I know it. But I didn't want to fly without telling you the truth. Please trust me. Everything depends on this flight. What is your answer, sir? Contact, Michael. Thanks, sir. I'd like to see you squirm for what you did to Raul, but I can't. You're my prisoner, Moran.
Hello? Hello? Give me W 2376. Captain Lawson has made for you the double cross. He lost his train, senor. He has left. And now, Lawson, he is living with all the money. They send Red Johnson up to blast him out of the air. He'll never make San Anton.
Your future husband's going to have wings. Give me one of my cigarettes, kid. All right, Jerry. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm going to be all right. Tastes good. I'll bet it does. An application has gone to Washington for your full reinstatement, Mickey. For exceptional bravery under fire. And the Colonel thinks there's no doubt. <laughs> what are you trying to do? Tell me another one of your stories about the brave knight. The brave knight's all right. This isn't a fairy tale this time. You've come through, boy. Do you think that the likes of you could be taken to the likes of me? Sure, Mike. <laughs> 